Hey guys, welcome back to Curling Chronicles Playing It Forward. We are here with Delaney Strauss, who skips Team Strauss. Okay, so you ready for this interview? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Delaney Strauss. I was born in Midland, Michigan. Um, I've been curling since I was 12 or 13 years old. I think I started in seventh grade. Um, I currently live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and I'm 23. So how did you end up going? I got into curling because my brother curled and my dad curled. Um, my dad started curling after the Sochi Olympics, I believe, and he just wanted to try it and start, and then my brother started doing it for a sport a little bit before me, and then I just followed suit pretty quickly after. So when and how did you know that you were well as a team together? Um, well, I mean, one thing about my team that's quite impressive in my opinion is we're all the oldest, I'm the oldest, Becca and I are the same age, we're 23 years old, and we've been playing together for five years. This is our fifth season. We played well through juniors together, and now we're starting the women's journey here. And I think probably after our first season, we, we found something that clicked really well. We had um, a really great season that year. We had ups and downs and changes of lineup, but we did finally find something that worked. What do you think it takes to play get a uh, team to like uh, the very top? I mean, it takes a lot of work and a lot of dedication, but I I truly think there needs to be talent involved and you see to mesh a lot together as a team. There's a lot of teams that are willing to work hard, but there, there has to be some chemistry there as well. It's not just about who works the hardest. It, it, it's never going to be about that. I think there needs to be about, needs to be passion and I think that really just a lot of chemistry is what helps you get to the top. Now how do you balance a full-time job with curling? It's very difficult. I mean it's something that I'm still managing to this day. I have found it to be um, very very hard. I think everybody on my team is really managing that in different ways. Um, I think that you really just have to acknowledge that you have to put your mental health first and that there are going to be times that things have to give. You have you might have to give up a little bit of work, you might have to give up a little bit of curling, but honestly you're not going to succeed in either work or in curling if you're not feeling your best and mentally there. So I think that once my team has really decided that our mental health is our top priority here, that we've really succeeded a lot. So what's the most important skill to get by in the position you play? I really think that just being like calm and collected is super important. I mean, you've seen on the ice before, if you've ever watched me play, I have a lot of passion. I'm not afraid to room slam. I, I don't think that's a bad thing and I stand by that. But I think that there are times where you have to be calm and collected and a great leader out there. Now, do you warm up individually or as a team? As a team. Um, I mean, a lot of teams do things very differently than us. My team, we're together all the time. We have some alone time but comparatively to other teams i would say that we have little to no no like alone time compared to others um but we warm up as a team we meet together as a team we eat together as a team pretty much we all go in our own bedrooms at nighttime to sleep but other than that we're always together so tell us about training practice, stuff like that. yeah i mean it's a, it's a huge balancing act and it's very dependent on what we're competing in coming up um, I would say that as a standard, my team's general rule of thumb is getting on the ice five or six times a week, but competing does count as getting time on the ice. So if I'm playing an event for three or four days, then I need to get on the ice for two or three practices. So we like to consider ice time rather than just practice sessions because we are going to be competing a lot as well, as well as like working out. I mean, for me as a skip, I really prioritize my curling practice than I would necessarily a workout. I do a lot of cardio based things just because that I really need that endurance. But I would say that most of us are probably in the gym four or five times a week. I'm in the gym probably at least four times, but sometimes it's a lifting session that's like an hour and a half, but sometimes it's a quick 45 minute cardio session. And then also when I talk about balancing work and things like that, like again, we really need to prioritize our mental health so if we need to take a break and skip a workout that day or skip a practice our team is like we're super comfortable with that as well. Now what's your mindset in a game if you're down points and how do you stay focused and motivated? 
like I said, my team's been playing together for five years. So pretty much anything we've done. We've came back from leads, we've given up leads, we've stayed ahead, we've stayed down. So just the constant reassurance that I've done this before is pretty powerful. We get down three or four. I've came back from a three or four lead before. I've even scored three in the last end to win a game. We've all done that. So I think that constant like reassurance and being comfortable in that position is really great. I think that that's kind of like how I stay calm when I get down to points in a game. So how do you prepare for big shots? Yeah, I mean, I really do have a routine and it's super important to not only establish a like inner self routine or a pre-shot routine for yourself, but really a team routine. And like I said, I've been with my team for a long time. So I think things just come fairly comfortable to me because we do the same thing every time. Of course, in the back of my head, I know it's a big shot. I like to tell myself when it's a big shot because I think that's not something that you should slack off and say, oh, it's just any old shot because it's not. But I do think that keeping your routine the same every single time really helps calm my nerves and just really make sure that we make the next one. So, um, uh, what's a moment you can hear that you most proud of? Honestly, this year has been pretty turning for our team. I mean, we started the season at like 30th in the world and we've jumped up to 15. And I really think that's a big jump to be making. And it's hard for me not to say things this season as much as I like going to the World University Games was amazing. Junior Worlds was incredible. It was the, like one of the best experiences I've ever had curling. But honestly, where it really put us ahead was at the beginning of our season. We won the Euro, like the Euro Super Series, I think it was called, in Sterling, Scotland. And it was a come, behind, come from behind victory against a team that I've looked up to for so long. And I think honestly, that was one of my favorite moments with my team. We were abroad, we won the whole event. Little did we know like that event was gonna help us get into a bunch of the slams this year. And it was just like a really great experience to finally win your first tour event because we had never won a tour event yet and that was the first one and I just like don't think I'll ever forget that. So who has been the toughest one you played? Why? This week or just in general? In general. In general. I mean we played Rachel Holman at the last slam. I I just am not sure anyone's beating her this year. She's incredible. She's someone her strategy and her skill set is something that I admire incredibly. Like she's just, she holds herself just very high and I, I think that's really great. I I mean, she's playing so well. I really don't know if anyone's beating her this year and I'm really excited to watch her at the Scotties coming up. I, I think that anyone who has to play her like definitely has a game ahead. I definitely think that my team has worked really hard on the mental aspect of the game and it's more than just training and going out on the ice and trying your best there's more to that and I would definitely say that like working on your emotions and trying to handle them into like the best possible way is probably the advice that I would give to young curlers find out what you need from your teammates because they're not going to know when everybody needs something different. So don't be afraid to ask if you need to have them say something else or something like that. Also, don't be afraid to have a little bit of passion. Like being a female curler, I do think that there's some stigma behind having a little bit of passion or being a little bit angry when you miss. This is a sport and I like to remind people that this is a sport. And although it is a, a calmer sport, all things considered, like we're not going on a basketball court, we're not going on a football field, but it's okay to have a little bit of passion. When you miss, it's okay to be upset. So do you have any tips to getting from the making internationalist level to the very top? I mean, I haven't really necessarily done that yet. So I think that I'm on a really great trajectory to do that. We are a fairly young team comparatively to the field. And I think that staying consistent, playing on tour is probably the best way to do it. In terms of like what I would tell young curlers is consistency does make a big difference. So if you can find a team that you are comfortable staying with, 
that have the same goals and desires that you do, that makes a huge difference. And just because you both want to win, like most of the time you both, everybody wants to go out on the ice and win. Like I would have a huge problem if people didn't feel the same. But in terms of like long-term goals, like does this person want to like win U18s this year or does this person want to win the Olympics? I don't think either is a wrong answer. I just think that it's important that your team feels the same way. Well, thank you for doing this. Of course, thank you for having me. Good going.